This article is about the Moro National Liberation Front led by Noor Misuari. For later factions, see Moro National Liberation Front. The Moro National Liberation Front or Mindanao National Liberation Front is a secessionist political organization in the Philippines that was founded by Noor Misuari in 1969. The MNLF struggled against the Philippine government to achieve independence of the Banks Amaro land. The MNLF GPH peace process is ongoing since the 1976 and both parties are working together to negotiate the terms and conditions of the legal framework and implementation of genuine autonomy as a peaceful path towards independence. As defined by the MNLF, the territory of Banks Amaro land covers Sulab, Mindanao, Palawan, and Sabah. In 1996, the MNLF signed a peace agreement with the Philippines government that saw the creation of Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao, an area composed of two mainland provinces and three island provinces in which the predominantly Muslim population enjoys a degree of self-rule. Noor Misuari was installed as the region's governor but his rule ended in violence when the former MNLF leader led a failed rebellion against the Philippines government in November 2001 thus illegally escaping to Sabah, Malaysia before being deported back to the Philippines by the Malaysian authorities. MNLF is internationally recognized by the Organization of Islamic Cooperation and its Parliamentary Union of OIC member states. Since 1977, the MNLF has been an observer member of the OIC. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation is the second largest intergovernmental organization after the United Nations, and has membership of 57 states spread over four continents. The Philippine government also requested similar recognition as observer member but was denied by the OIC. On January 30, 2012, MNLF became an observer member of the Parliamentary Union of Islamic Cooperation, as approved during the 7th PUIC Global Session held in Palembang, Indonesia. Ideology, according to the official MNLF blog site, the MNLF ideology is called egalitarianism which affirms, promotes, or characterizes a principled belief in the equality of all people in the political, economic, social, and civil rights aspects regardless of differences in religion, race, ethnic origin, age, and gender. MNLF Chairman Noor Misuari mentioned the egalitarian state in one of his interviews. Contrary to the notion that MNLF is an Islamic organization, the MNLF claims to be composed of Muslims, Christians, tribal Lumads, and any other religions who respect each other under the harmony of religious tolerance. Leadership The founder and leader of the MNLF is Professor Dr. Noor Misuari. Based on almost all official communications of the Organization of Islamic Conference and the Republic of the Philippines, Noor Misuari is addressed as the chieftain of the Bank Samaro, founder of the MNLF, chairman of the MNLF leader of the MNLF, and commander-in-chief of the MNLF. Despite the final peace agreement, Ms. Uari was charged of rebellion over an alleged attack on a Philippine military camp in Sulan in 2001, which he and the MNLF denied. Nor Ms. Uari became a political prisoner on charges of rebellion from 2001 to 2009 during the regime of President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. The court acquitted him in 2009 because the prosecution was unable to produce sufficient evidence. MNLF flag According to the MNLF Director for Advocacy, the symbols in the MNLF flag represent the harmony of the Banks Amaro heart, mind, and body. The star symbolizes the Banks Amaro virtues of truthfulness, fairness, equality, and tolerance to individual differences which guides the judgment of the leaders and people of the Banks Amaro land. The color of the star is yellow gold. The crescent moon symbolizes the Banks Amaro wisdom as we endlessly journey through political changes, technological progress, and economic development. The color of the crescent moon is yellow gold. The chrysord symbolizes Banks Amaro strength which defends our people's freedom, native culture, peacefulness, and territorial integrity. The color of the chrysord is white with a yellow strip and its handle have five black stripes. The chrysord is at the lower center and pointed to the right, which means the sword will always make loyalty decisions for the interest of the Banks Amaro motherland. Above the chrysord is the crescent moon at the middle left side. Above the crescent moon is the star. 
the background of the flag has a color red, which represents the bank's Amaro activism, decisiveness, persistence, frugality, and sacrifices in pushing forward the revolutionary struggle for survival, self-determination, and prosperity. The MNLF flag does not represent symbols of any religious, geographical, or ethnic groups. Through time, various MNLF units have introduced many unique design of the flag. The most common designs of the sword is a straight type chris and not the wavy type, the star is outside the crescent moon, there are Arabic or tribal alphabetic markings. History of armed conflict, with reference to the official MNLF blog site, the MNLF believes that the Banks Amaro land is already a sovereign nation hundreds of years before it was illegally annexed as part of the Philippines in the 1935 Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines. Mindanao became a land for new beginnings when broad tracts of land were given away by the Philippine government from 1903 to the 1970s to migrants from other parts of the country in a so-called homestead program, akin to Indonesia's transmigrasi. There was no land titling system by the natives of Mindanao at that time. The Philippine government took advantage of the absence of land titles to give away lots in Mindanao to poor farmers and other migrants from other parts of the country. Mindanao saw itself as the adopted home of a rapidly burgeoning population of Christian settlers who encroached on the living areas of the original Muslim and tribal residents, who now began to feel that they were also being robbed of their lands and the economic opportunities they provided. With that systematic encroachment, the natives, especially the original Muslim and Lumad segments, developed a deep-seated mistrust of the officials of the Philippine government, a government under which they felt they were being treated as second-class citizens. Sporadic fighting in various parts of Mindanao ensued between the natives and the troops' militias of the Philippine government. Due to this, Mindanao became a battleground of intense armed conflict. Even the Americans sent forces to battle frontiers in Mindanao. During the 1970s, President Ferdinand Marcos formed the ILAGA and CHDF ILAGA is a Christian militia which claims to defend Christians from attacks perpetrated by Muslims. The ILAGA was one of the groups who fiercely fought against the MNLF. After over three decades, in the year 2011, the ILAGA embraced the egalitarian ideology of MNLF and have joined forces. Birth of the MNLF There is no exact record as to when the MNLF was founded. However, the MNLF have traditionally been celebrating its anniversary every March 18, a date that coincides with the commemoration of the Jabada massacre. According to the official MNLF blog site, in March 18, 1968, between 14 to 68 Filipino Muslim military trainees were massacred in Korajida by soldiers of the armed forces of the Philippines under its commander-in-chief President Ferdinand Marcos. It was popularly called the Jabada Massacre. The impact was an outrage among the Muslims in Mindanao especially those who are from Sulu where these military trainees were recruited. Not taking this lightly, nor Misuari. A University of the Philippines professor rose to become the leader of this outraged group and he founded the Moro National Liberation Front in 1969. After a few months of setting up the organization, the MNLF officially proclaimed itself a political party in 1970. After recruiting sufficient number of freedom fighters, the MNLF launched a protracted armed struggle. At that time of the conception of the MNLF, it recruited members with an original objective of regaining the independence of the Banks Amaro people and separate its sovereignty from the government of the Republic of the Philippines. The MNLF proclaimed itself a Mindanao liberation movement and proceeded to start the insurgency against the dictatorship of then-President Ferdinand E. Marcos. The seven years of intense armed conflict between MNLF and the GRPH resulted in the deaths of thousands of government soldiers and MNLF freedom fighters as well as the displacement of thousands of families all across the Banks Amaro land. Another important event in the MNLF history is the Takbal Mosque Massacre. In September 24, 1974, a total of 1776 Muslim churchgoers were massacred by the armed forces of the Philippines in Malisbong, Palembang, Sultan Kudarat, Mindanao. While the Muslims were praying, they were sprayed with bullets by the armed forces of the Philippines. As of 2011, a marker in the massacre site reads, 
Bank Samara Republique Moro National Liberation Front Hadi Hamza Takbal Mosque Malisbong, Palembang Province of Sultan Kudarat. This old mosque was constructed and owned by late Hadi Hamza Takbal, a former strong MNLF finance supporter. Takbal Mosque, a place where more than 1,000 Muslim civilians was massacred by Philippine Army January 15 B Infantry Battalion on September 24, 1974 under the regime of then-President Ferdinand E. Marcos. Compliment by COMDR Tian Bazar G. Takbal and Takbal family. Terrorism and Human Rights Issues there is a United Nations Security Council report in April 23, 2010 that says that the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, Abu Sayyaf Group and New People's Army are among the groups around the world that recruit and use children. By contrast, in the report the Moro National Liberation Front is not mentioned as a human rights violator. In a separate corroborating report, the United States Department of State also had a 2009 Human Rights Report and it has never mentioned MNLF as a violator. On October 28, 2011, the Philippine Interior and Local Government Secretary Jesse Robredo admitted that some members of the Abu Sayyaf are related to members of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front and even government officials. External Relations Policy the MNLF does not take sides in armed conflict or insurgencies outside the Banks Amaro land. MNLF is neither associated with, connected with, providing tactical experience or expertise to, advocating for, financially supporting, nor organizationally allied with any other international or domestic insurgency or terrorist organizations. MNLF is standalone and is not open to any talks towards the possibility of partnership or collaboration with any other insurgency or terrorist groups. The MNLF advocates the use of negotiation and peaceful means to settle conflicts. The MNLF is willing to provide hearer to anyone who is a victim of atrocities of war, political persecution, and or forced migration. Large troop movements and assault operation of the armed MNLFs are led by a ground commander, always coordinated with the government, and usually in line with the responsibility of the members in a specific MNLF community to conduct a citizen's arrest against heavily armed lawless groups or in hot pursuit to rescue kidnap victims and hostages. Splits of the MNLF There are three major groups that had separated from the MNLF, namely. Equals MILF equals. The first separatist of the MNLF was the Moro Islamic Liberation Front in 1976 which was led by Hazim Salamat. The MILF separated from MNLF for two reasons, MILF believes that the Banks Amaro land should be an independent Islamic state, and the Banks Amaro freedom fighters should not negotiate with the government of the Republic of the Philippines. The first and original name of MILF was New MNLF. The MNLF believes that the MILF was formed as a result of the infiltration of the armed forces of the Philippines and strategic move to divide and conquer the MNLF. The MNLF believes that the MILF is being used by the AFP in false flag operations. Has him Salamat died in 2003 at age 61, new leadership took over and the organization still exists as of 2011. The only GPH administration that negotiated with the MILF was the Arroyo administration and the peace talk workload was inherited by the Aquino administration. There are international observers who classify MILF as a terrorist organization, such as the Council on Foreign Relations. Despite MILF killing of many Philippine soldiers and policemen, the Philippine government admitted that it is funding the MILF. The MNLF disapproves the idea that GPH is negotiating with the MILF. The MNLF believes that it will be more efficient for the MILF to just return to its mother organization. While the MILF leaders insist on negotiating with the GPH, the MILF troops on the ground have gradually begun to return to the MNLF. The Banks Amaro Islamic Freedom Fighters, led by Emeril Umbracato, broke away from the MILF in 2010 because he was not included in the MILF GPH peace process. Equals Abu Sayyaf Group equals, the second separatist of the MNLF is the Abu Sayyaf Group led by Qadhafi Janjalani in 1991. This group was originally part of the so-called National Islamic Command Council which was an anti-Misuari group led by Melam Alam, 
the MNOF sack chief of staff in 1990. It was NICC who burned the town of Ipil in April 1995. Abu Saif is intolerant to other religions and called for continuous jihad to pursue a pure Islamic state and believes in the killing of enemies, and depriving them of their wealth. The MNLF believes that the Abu Saif was formed as a result of the black operation of the armed forces of the Philippines to smear dirt on the face of Islam and scare the people against the Muslims. The MNLF believes that the Abu Saif enjoyed the support of the AFP. Qadhafi Janjalani died in December 18, 1998, new leadership took over and the organization still exists as of 2014. In February 2, 2013, when MNLF commander Habia Malik and his men attacked ASG in Patikal Sulan in an effort to rescue kidnapped victims Jordanian journalist Baker Abdullah Chiani, TV cameraman Ramel Vila, and audio technician Rolando Letriero, Elwald Horn, Lorenzo Vinciguer, Warren Rodwell, and Japanese Toshio Ito, the GPH troops did not help in the hot pursuit because the Philippine president made a statement that he did not sanction the attack against the terror group. In a press conference on February 9, 2013, MNLF leader Nur Misuari said that MNLF leadership would no longer tolerate the Abu Sayyaf using Sula as a haven for criminal activities, victimizing locals and foreigners alike. Equals 15 EC equals, the 15 EC came to being in 2001 during the administration of President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. They called themselves MNLF Central Committee or MNLF Executive Council. The leaders are 15 leaders of MNLF who turned against Noor Misuari for reasons similar to that of Abu Saif and MILF. It was often called a hostile takeover by proxy of the Philippine government. The 15-man council successfully took over the leadership and the Arroyo administration made Noor Misuari a political prisoner from 2001 until he was acquitted in December 2009. While Noor Misuari was politically persecuted, the pro misuari MNLF faction laid low from 2001 until his comeback in 2010. The separatist MNLF faction does not have any official name, but is popularly called as 15 EC. The 15 EC are no longer considered as one with the MNLF because they violated the one MNLF doctrine. In one of the speeches of this 15 EC, they said, on Misuari, he is the founding chairman of the MNLF. He was the leader of the MNLF and he has represented the MNLF for a long period until the MNLF Central Committee stripped him of his powers in April 1, 2008, for his incompetence and for lack of direction. The continued recognition by the GRP of Noor Misuari is seen by the Moro people as a low-intensity conflict strategy by the government to perpetuate the division of the MNLF. The apparent continued recognition by the OIC Secretary General of Bro. Nur is immaterial to the MNLF Central Committee. The over 200 members of the 15 EC were all officially expelled from the MNLF in October 10, 2013 for at least one of the various reasons, such as, but not limited to, factionalism and other forms of disloyalty to the one MNLF doctrine, counterfeiting the negotiations and sabotaging the MNLF GPH peace process, participating in fraudulent transactions, accepting bribes from and defection to the GPH and other opposite counterpart of the MNLF, collaborating in acts of terrorism and armed conflict-related human trafficking. Peace talks, all peace talks and negotiations between the Moro National Liberation Front and Government of the Republic of the Philippines are participated in, brokered, mediated, facilitated, and coordinated by the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Heavy fighting started in 1970 and the first peace talk was in 1976. The GRPH, after losing many soldiers and six years of fighting with the MNLF, coupled with the economic crisis brought about by oil embargo imposed by the OIC, decided to initiate a move to convince Noor Misuari to sit on a negotiation table for a peace talk. President Marcos sent his first lady Imelda Marcos to Tripoli. Libya to request the assistance of Muammar al-Gaddafi to broker a ceasefire and peace negotiation between GRPH and MNLF. In 1976, Gaddafi played a very big role and successfully brokered Noor Misuari and President Marcos to sign an international treaty called the 1976 MNLF-GRPH Tripoli Agreement. 
the treaty was witnessed and recognized by the OIC. The 1976 Tripoli Agreement provided for a general ceasefire and called for autonomy under the broad principle that Mindanao would remain an integral part of the Republic of the Philippines. After 13 years, the 1989 Autonomous Region for Muslim Mindanao Organic Act was enacted into a law, wherein 13 provinces were proclaimed subject to the provisions of the agreement, which allowed Muslims their own courts, schools and administrative system. In 1996, the MNLFGRPH signed a final peace agreement, which provides that the Autonomous Region for Muslims would have a Legislative Assembly, Executive Council, Special Regional Security Forces, and economic and financial system. Treaties and agreements between the MNLF and the Philippine government, according to the official MNLF blog site, below are the major agreements made by the MNLF. Equals 1976 Tripoli Agreement during President Ferdinand Marcos equals, after years of intense fighting between the MNLF and the GRPH, the organization of the Islamic Conference finally interceded. In 1976, Libyan politician Muammar Gaddafi brokered the negotiation between the GRPH and MNLF leader Nur Masuari. The outcome of the negotiation was the signing of the MNLF GRPH Tripoli Agreement of 1976. The 1976 Tripoli Agreement essentially made MNLF and GRPH meet in a compromise agreement to establish an autonomous region in the Banks Amaro land. The Tripoli Agreement of 1976 is the basis of the mandate of the MNLF, with Noor Misuari as the only one recognized leader, to represent the Bank Samaro people in its struggle for freedom. Out of the 25 provinces claimed by the MNLF for independence, the Tripoli Agreement negotiations settled to a compromise of 13 provinces to be included in the formation of an autonomous government for the Bank Samaro people, namely, Basilan, Sulab, Tawi Tawi. Zambonga del Sur, Zambonga del Norte, North Cotabato, Magandanao, Sultan Kudarat, Lanao del Norte, Lanao del Sur, Tave del Sur, South Cotabato, Palawan. Despite the signing of the Tripoli Agreement of 1976, the fighting still continued on the ground between the AFP of President Marcos and the MNLF because of the absence of a clear guideline on the implementing rules and regulation of the Tripoli Agreement. After securing the 1976 Tripoli Agreement, Marcos went ahead and held a referendum, which seemed to indicate opposition to the inclusion of certain provinces, opposition to the degree of autonomy presumably wanted by the MNLF and support for Marcos a Euro unregistered trademark plan for two autonomous regions with ten provinces under central control. The initial ceasefire, which was beneficial to Misuari as it gave his battle-weary troops time to rest, eventually worked against the MNLF's interests. While the MNLF was relaxing, the AFP infiltrated it with a divide-and-conquer strategy. As a result, in 1976, the MNLF suffered from internal factionalism as disagreements between moderates and conservatives. In 1981, the internal differences finally caused the birth of a more extremist Moro Islamic Liberation Front faction to officially break off from the MNLF. The existence of the MILF translates into a continuing insurgency confronting the GRPH. Equals 1989 ARMM Organic Act During President Karazin Aquino equals, in 1986, President Marcos was ousted by a popular revolt called People Power One. In 1987, the new president of the Republic of the Philippines Karazin Aquino visited Noor Misuari in his home province in Sula to talk peace with him. The humility and courage of Cory Aquino softened the warrior heart of Noor Misuari. In 1987, the autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao became part of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. On August 1, 1989, the ARMM was created through Republic Act No. 6734 otherwise known as the ARMM Organic Act in pursuance with a constitutional mandate to provide for an ARMM. This law was further amended in 2001 and popularly became known as RA. 1954 ARMM Organic Act, 2001 Amendment. Equals 1994 Joint Ceasefire Ground Rules During President Fidel Ramos equals, in January 20, 1994, 
the MNLF and GRPH signed a joint guidelines and ground rules for the implementation of the 1993 interim GRP MNLF ceasefire agreement. This agreement covers MNLF identified areas including the following provinces Basilan, Sulub, Zambonga del Sur, Zambonga del Norte, North Cotabato, Magandanao, Sultan Kudarat, Lanao del Norte, Lanao del Sur, Davao del Norte, Davao Oriental, Davao del Sur, South Cotabato, Palawan. In this agreement, the GRPH is mandated to authorize the MNLF to carry their firearms within MNLF identified areas. And GRPH may carry their firearms only in the performance of their official functions. The GRPH shall also authorize the MNLF VIPs to carry sidearms and shall provide additional security when moving in urban areas outside the MNLF zones. Equals 1996 Final Peace Agreement During President Fidel Ramos equals, President Fidel Ramos succeeded President Correa Aquino in 1992 and he relentlessly pursued peace by running after Noor Misuari using persistent diplomatic emissaries. In 1993, the Philippine government signed a joint ceasefire agreement with the MNLF. In 1994, the joint ceasefire ground rules between the MNLF and GRPH was finalized. This 1994 MNLF-GRPH joint ceasefire ground rules, which is still in effect as of 2011, grants the MNLF to possess and carry firearms in the 13 provinces stipulated in the Tripoli Agreement and the MNLF officials may carry sidearms when moving in areas outside the 13 provinces. In 1996, a compromise was finally reached by MNLF and the government and the MNLF-GRP 1996 Final Peace Agreement was signed by Ambassador Manuel Tan, Noor Misuari, and Ali Alitas. As of 2011, the 1996 Final Peace Agreement is the framework of talks and negotiation to determine implementing rules and guidelines. Declaration of Independence of Banks Amaro Land On January 15, 2012, the Moro National Liberation Front declared the independence of Banks Amaro Land in Valencia Bicudnan. According to the MNLF page in Facebook, the MNLF plans to establish Mindanao as a new nation that is composed of a federation of four sub-states, namely, Substate of Mindanao, Substate of Sulub, Substate of Banks Amaro, and Substate of Compostela. Mindanao will be an egalitarian state. Sula and Banks Amaro will be Islamic states. Compostela will be a socialist state. The leadership of the federation will rotate between the four states. The federation will also guarantee freedom of migration across sub-states. Opponents According to the MNLF blog site, the major opponents of the MNLF are the government of the Philippines and government of Malaysia. The territories claimed by the MNLF are Mindanao, Palawan, and Sabah. The MNLF GPH dispute is rooted on their conflicting political direction. GPH wants Mindanao, Palawan, and Sula to continue as part of the Philippines, while MNLF wants secession from Philippines. The MNLF GMY dispute is rooted on Sabah because the MNLF claim historical rights that wanted to evict the current GMY occupation of Sabah. However, on 2015, in a recent statement by Noor Misuari, he rejected any reports from the MNLF Peace Panel spokesperson Absalom Servizer on the Sabah issue and said only the Sultanate of Sula can pursue the negotiations for the Sabah claim with the Malaysian sides. The MNLF has asserted that their group are not involved in any part of the Sabah case and stressing it is a non-issue as Sabah has become the AUROE home base for different tribal groupings of Muslims from different regions of Southeast Asia that have enjoyed peaceful and harmonious coexistence with the Chinese and Christian populace in the RIEURO. MNLF treats USA and China as friendly parties. Current status On the GRPH side the Office of the Presidential Advisor on the Peace Process formed a legal panel represented the MNLF, GRP and mediated by the OIC. The legal panel has now completed and initialed the final agreement on revising RA 9054 and it moves forward into Congress for revision replacement of RA 9054 to create a genuine autonomy. The administration of President Noinoy Aquino framework of program for Mindanao is spelled out in Mindanao 2020. President Aquino said that Mindanao will be at the core of our social development and poverty alleviation programs. 
At present, the MNLF is becoming apprehensive about the GRPH capability in taking a lead in implementing the genuine autonomy in the Banks Amaro land for the following reasons. High poverty incidence in Philippines a euro some 20.5% of Filipinos or about 4.1 million families are going hungry while 51% or some 10.4 million families consider themselves poor according to a new survey by pollster social weather stations The 2011 hunger incidence index report for Philippines in 2010 is 11.5% Economic mismanagement by the GRPH Euro Philippines has become the second least attractive investment site in ASEAN, incorrigible culture of corruption in the GRPH Euro The PERC survey that says Philippines is most corrupt nation in Asia. And a lot of Philippine politicians are entangled with systematic stealing of billions of pesos of Philippine taxpayers' money. High human rights abuses by the GRPH Euro according to Pulse Asia study. The Armed Forces of the Philippines is most corrupt agency of the Philippine government. The United Nations Security Council and the U.S. State Department also reported a high incidence of human rights violation by the AFP. Instances of torture and detention cells of the Philippine National Police have also been reported by other sources. The Philippine government forces were also trained and initiated into the organization using inhumane methods such as torture, hazing, and maltreatment, thus making each of them tolerant to the sight of human suffering. In February 23, 2011 the MNLF GRPHOIC had a fourth tripartite talks in Jeddah. The joint communique after the talks indicate that three groups of experts from MNLF GRPHOIC IDB will be formed, to formulate the terms of reference of the Bank's Amaro Development Assistance Fund by May 30, 2011 to act as Tripartite Implementation Monitoring Committee by April 30, 2011, to formulate the Mineral Sharing Agreement by April 30, 2011. They set a timetable and deadline to present the result to OIC Peace Committee for Southern Philippines Chairman in Kazakhstan in June 2011. They did not meet the deadline because the topic is too complicated and the debates went on and on without a resolution. After almost a year of stalemate, in March 1, 2012, there was a MNLF GPH high-level talks in Bandung, Indonesia to discuss the three pending items enumerated February 23, 2011 The MNLF GRPH OIC had a fourth tripartite talks in Jeddah. On the second day of the talks, the MNLF walked out and unilaterally decided to suspend its participation in the peace process talks and activities with the GPH. The date March 2, 2012 marks the day when MNLF unilaterally suspends its participation in the peace talks with the GPH. The stalemate was on the mineral revenue sharing. Mineral sharing is about how the ARMM regional government and Philippine national government would set policies to regulate mineral exploitation and agree on the percentage sharing of the revenues from mineral extraction in the ARMM area. They could not end the dispute about definition and classification of minerals because none of the negotiators on both sides are mineral experts. Another stalemate of the negotiation is that the MNLF was also hesitant on the percentage sharing because the sharing is between ARMMRG and PHNG. MNLF is neither part of ARMMRG, nor part of PHNG. If Noor Misuari could have been the incumbent ARMM regional governor at that time of the negotiation, for sure a resolution could have been arrived at. The stalemate on mineral sharing can be resolved when Noor Misuari becomes ARMM regional governor. In October 8, 2012, the MNLF confirmed Noor Misuari's filing of candidacy for ARMM regional governor for the 2013 elections. In October 10, 2012, the MNLF reiterated their position on the suspension of MNLF participation in the talks with the GPH enumerating the demand before they go back to the negotiating table. In October 14, 2012, the MNLF confirms alliance with Mindanao Independence Movement that will be formally announced in the MNLF Summit in October 21, 2012 Sunday, starting 8 a.m. to be held in Davao Crocodile Park, Riverfront Corporate City, Diversion Highway, Moore, Davao City. In the middle of January 2013, the MNLF moved a large troop to attempt to negotiate the release of kidnapped victims. The negotiation went bad, 
resulting in MNLF launching an immediate citizen's arrest against Abu Sayyaf group operating in Pati Kul Sula. This MNLF combat operation is still ongoing. In January 21, 2013, at the eighth session of the Parliamentary Union of Islamic Cooperation, the MNLF renewed its support for the peace agreement signed between the Philippine government and the MNLF and call for immediate and complete execution of the terms of the agreement. The PUIC responded by urging member states as well as charity institutions in the Islamic world to increase the volume of its humanitarian assistance for Muslims in South Philippines in order to accelerate economic and social development. In February 6, the Euro 7, 2013, the MNLF attended the 12th session of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation held in Cairo, Egypt. The communica copyright of the OICA Euro unregistered trademark S 12th session reiterates the need to resolve the issue of Muslims in southern Philippines promptly, and urges the government of the Philippines and the MNLF to continue their efforts in order to find solution to pending issues, consistent with the 1976 Tripoli Agreement and the 1996 Final Peace Agreement related to the autonomous region, revenue sharing, definition of strategic minerals, and the transitional mechanisms. In June 1, 2014, the MNLF published their conditions and willingness to cooperate with the GPH in the implementation of the 1996 MNLF-GPH Final Peace Agreement Section 20, a, says, there shall be a special socio-economic, cultural and educational program to cater to MNLF to prepare them and their families for productive endeavors, provide for educational, technical skills and livelihood training and give them priority for hiring and development projects. In May 17, 2015, Ms. Uari has called for a meeting with top MNLF officials on May 20 to discuss the recent updates on the peace negotiations in Mindanao. The meeting is intended to discuss on how the MNLF as a permanent observer to the OIC will a Euro -O represent the sad case of the Philippine government under President Benigno S. Aquino III, who has repeatedly shown disrespect to the 1996 peace agreement by totally ignoring the comprehensive and correct implementation of the International Accord a Euro. The MNLF also hinted that Ms. Uari might attend Islamic Conference of Foreign Ministers meeting in Kuwait on the same month where he will have the opportunity to present the disappointment of the MNLF over the alleged sidelining of the 1996 Final Peace Agreement. In May 29, 2015, MNLF published the proposed Moro Administrative Region Law which is a counter-proposal to the Bank's Amara Basic Law of the MILF. The proposed MAR law is designed as an upgrade of the ARMM Organic Act, aimed towards full integration of the Moro people into the Philippine system. The vital features of the proposed MAR law include creation of the Moro Administrative Region Development Council, establishment of the official registry of the Moro people which requires the member to express an oath of allegiance to the Republic of the Philippines, establishment of Moro Administrative Region Non-Stock Savings and Loan Association and appropriation and performance measurement of the MAR, among others. Compared to the P70 billion being asked by MILF's BBL, the MAR law only requires P5 billion initial outlay to construct the MAR headquarters and around P300 million per annum budget for the MAR DC MAR law's requirement for private sector participation provides a leash to armed groups that sanctions their privilege of preferential employment to economic development projects if they make trouble with peace and order. It also allows the people of Sabah to voluntarily register their own selves in the official registry of the Moro people. References External links, official website, The Long Struggle to Silence the Guns of Rebellion, a review of the long and winding trail to the elusive peace agreements by the CENSEI report, Moro National Liberation Front on Facebook.